Let's talk about academic honesty. My first, I want to start out with, I think most students are honest. Um, unfortunately, there are some, just a couple every now and then that are not, and that's why I have to have this policy. And really academic dishonesty is kind of this willful, intentional deception that happens in order to pr improve a grade. Um, I think this, uh, usually it's an unintentional, um, it's unintentional to be academically dishonest because it usually comes in the form of plagiarism. And that's why I want to explain plagiarism. I'm gonna go through a few things. But with plagiarism, it's using another's work and then not crediting the source. So you're taking someone else's work and you're claiming it as your own. Now there's a little bit of a nuanced version because you can't actually, you know, go to a website and let's say I ask you about the health effects of saturated fat and you take this and you cut, you write out one sentence and then you, you paste it and you submit it. Well, that's, this is kind of the definition of plagiarism, right? Taking someone else's work, um, not citing the source. But what if you went in and you, you put in a URL and added that at the bottom? So now, you're, now you've cited a source, right? It's incorrectly cited, and I go over citations in another um, section. But for this, it's still going to be plagiarism because it's really not clear what's your work and what is the work of Medline Plus. Um, right now, it looks like this student is trying to come claim that this is all of their work and that they just got their ideas from Medline Plus because that's usually what citations are for is to cite a source that gave us that helped us develop our thoughts and ideas not to copy and paste verbatim from a website this happens quite often and it's really easy for me to spot um, typically I have a plagiarism checker so I usually spot that now if you were to say According, whoops, according to Medline Plus, quote, end quote, and cite, you know, put down where you got it from, um, then this, this would not be plagiarism. It would still earn a zero. Any, any sort of plagiarism is going to earn a zero. But this would earn a zero because there's no demonstration of knowledge. The only thing it tells me is that this student knows how to do is copy and paste from a website. All right, so again, it's not gonna earn a very good grade. So how do you earn a good grade? You write in your own words. You can use other resources to help you develop your thoughts. And if you use any outside resources, um, you need to cite them in AMA or APA format. Now, I ha almost everything you need to know is in the soft chalk lesson. There are some instances that I actually will tell you to go search for something on the internet. Uh, but this is where you really should start, is a soft chalk lesson. You don't need to cite the soft chalk lesson. But you also can't just take, you know, information from the soft chalk lesson and plug it in either. Okay, so next up, AI, chat GPT. This kind of exploded um, in popularity. So, uh, and we're actually seeing students use AI-generated answers. So I... I want to introduce you to, to ChatGPT because actually this can be really helpful. Um, I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see. You can um, really help better your understanding of certain concepts with ChatGPT, but you can't use AI generated posts. So I say, you know, what are the health effects of too much saturated fat? Let's just say that. This is not a question, by the way, that I would ask. Um, because the answer is too simple. So, um, so this, you know, you can read through this. It can be like, oh, I forgot about that. Okay, let me help me generate my own answer based on that. That's fine. But if you, if somebody does this, a student does this and takes it. And again, let's go back to our our forum and just plugs it in. This is AI generated. Um, content. So I call this an AI generated answer. You are not allowed to use AI generated answers for your discussion posts, for your diet study assignments, for any assignments. Um, it'll earn a zero. So again, 
use it to better your understanding. If you copy and paste it, just like a website, then um, I, I use a, a AI detection software. So if you do that, first thing what, what I'll do is I will is I will give a warning to the student um, and a zero on the assignment, and then as we see for penalties for academic dishonesty, but if there's blatant offenses, repeated offenses, then um, I'll seek disciplinary action. Okay, lastly, exams. So the exams are open book, they're open note, um, but you do need to work independently, you can't work with others. So if I find evidence of that, then um, that student will receive some disciplinary action and a zero on the exam. Um, the exams are timed, they're only two midterm and final, so you can't look up every single answer uh, so you do have to study for the exams, but you know, it, if you forget that one detail, you can definitely look it up. Okay, lastly, what I want to finish with is most of your information, you can find it in the soft chalk lessons. Remember, this is the substitute for your textbook. You can find everything here. You do not have to cite soft chalk lessons, but if you use any outside resources for any information, and I know what's in the lesson, so if I start seeing this information that I didn't include in the lesson, there's probably a reason that I did not include it in the lesson. Um, then I'm going to, and you don't cite it, then you're going to be penalized for that. Okay, lastly, keep in mind that a lot of the information that you find on the internet, although it might be factually correct, a lot of times it does not relate to the question that I have asked you to critically think about. So when you start taking information from websites instead of using the lesson, you're pulling in information that might be unrelated to what we're discussing. So again, start with the lesson, although you're allowed to use outside resources, but if you do, you have to cite them. ChatGPT can have, um, and actually they, they talk about the limitations right on the front page. It might generate incorrect information. I've seen incorrect re information, incorrect resources. It can be um, biased, racist. It's pulling things from the internet and not all, everything on the internet is correct. So keep that in mind. Those are also other keys that I usually know that someone's using AI generated text. Okay, if you have any questions, I am I'm happy to answer them. I'm happy to meet with you um, since I know that some of this is a little bit nuanced. Okay, well, that's our end of our talk on academic honesty.